David, if you were a bounty hunter, would you be like up in people's faces? What would you be your whole methodology to capturing those crooks? I guess you kind of have to be with the types of people you're bringing in. Yeah. You know, you can't be exactly like, hey, come on, just come with me. Come on. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so you so Dave's the polite bounty hunter, all right. He's the, 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 the suggested bounty hunter, like, hey guys, what do you think? We just take a ride down there to the courthouse and straighten this out. You got time, it's Tuesday afternoon, it's a sunny day, we'll get ice cream afterwards. Let's go let's go get your freaking warrant straightened out. Okay, yeah, Steve. I was just going to say, like, maybe I'd offer to get him Happy Meals or something, you know. Mm. McDonald's Happy Meal always makes you feel better, especially if you What if that's what, like, broke the deal? It's the wrong Happy Meal toy, and then it just turns violent from there, and you have to bust out your freaking mace and your handcuffs? Well, like, like, they give you the Barbie toy instead of the hot Yeah, meal. they're like, I want the boy <laughs> toy, not the girl toy. Yeah. You gave uh, me the boy toy. The wrong toy. Come I on. feel like the boys always had the more cool toys in the, uh... Is that right? In the Happy hmm. Meals. Oh, yeah. Those gender specific Happy Meal toys. Let's start a conversation. That's oh god. Let's start a debate. Um, folks, we're talking about bounty hunters because we're covering a bounty hunter movie. But then I thought, like, let's imagine ourselves as bounty hunters. Like, what version of bounty hunters would we get from Dave and Jordan? Um, now, for myself, I could see being corrupted by that power. Hey, the state has employed me to kick down your door. Eat the fried chicken you were going to have for dinner and drag your ass back to jail, buddy. Um, yeah. No, I mean, my imagination only extends as far as, like, do you guys ever see Dog the Bounty Hunter? Do you know I've seen him and his family go and collect people Yeah, on their show? Mm-hmm. Got to get your life straightened out, man. Go with Christ. <laughs> Wasn't uh, he oh, coming uh, out of retirement not that long ago for that one chick's well, case? I don't know. He said like it was a publicity stunt. Yeah. You think? Oh yeah. Like there was a girl killed in Florida by her boyfriend or something, and then they found the bodies or whatever. Yeah. And, like dog. The dog was on the hunt. Mm-hmm. He's on the hunt. Woof woof or whatever they say. Um. No, his like he, like he and his wife were bounty hunters. Uh, his wife passed away. They made a spoof of it though, and like on Radio Nine One One, there was like a funny bounty hunter, and then uh. Cartman on South Park did an impression, and he was like a hall monitor that turns into Dog the Bounty Hunter. That was hilarious. It's actually a um, classic episode. <laughs> I mean, I got nothing against the real dog, except I, you know, it's like it's like being pulled over at a traffic stop over like a seatbelt. The truth is, nobody really wants the police up in their business ever, and so mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure having to deal with bounty hunters is probably more annoying and probably uh, hair raisingly stressful, but. Now, let's see. Jordan, you're the bounty hunter. How are you bringing it to the streets? Oh, heck yeah. I'd totally be in people's face. Like, I just (laughs) think I'd be the one they'd have to keep telling to calm down all the time. But Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you always going to have a coin with you and tell them, heads you live, tells you lose? (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's like an inside reference, David. You want to tell them what you're talking about? Well, we'll get into it. You know, it's this movie. Oh, yeah. She always has a coin with her. Tonight's movie, the bounty hunter flips a coin, which I don't even know if that's real in real life, but in the movie, we'll, we'll get we'll get into what's inside. real, what's not. When oh, Dave dang. brings the dangerous facts, like hello. Okay, I mean, I thought Jordan was going to say she was going to like crack skulls if they didn't comply, but it wasn't that violent a discussion. So I thought it'd be humorous to talk about the fake bounty hunter world. I could see, I you know, know, Jordan putting on some Oakleys and mm. some, you know, like knuckle gloves. Oh heck ready yeah! To take out some thugs. Oh <laughs> heck yeah! I I like I like where this is headed, you guys. I like the yeah. image that you're painting me. Like, for are you resisting zap zap? zap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gay. Crack open a cold box of wine or pour something cold on ice because it's the Binge Watchers Podcast. Headlines, home video headlines. 
what's new in movies and television that we should talk about. I didn't realize what a big show Bridgerton was when Jordan tried to tell us about it last week. Or maybe, whatever, I think it was last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, it's a really popular series. Um, Netflix is claiming that it's their most viewed ever with like 55 million or 85 million bajillion eyeballs. Um, but here's the thing. I had to sit down with Dave over the weekend and be like, Dave, how is it that BBC period piece type drama stuff is still this popular with so many people everywhere? Is it the romance, Jordan? The romance? Is it the, the jokes? Costumes? What is it? I just love like the, you know, it's, there has to be like a amount of effort in the, like the costume and the, the, you know, scenes and where they take place in the show, but they did renew for seasons three, four, and five for Bridgerton. So, what? you know, I'll be watching they it. They just jumped three more seasons already? They're mm-hmm. only in season two, right? Yes. So they already, wow, wow, wow. Well, because they are like doing, and I didn't realize that this is how they were going to do it in the first place, but it's like the each season will be featured around a different brother, Bridgerton brother, essentially, and like their quest to find love. So, oh, yeah, shit. I'll be watching. I'll be watching. On another note, though, if you like the same era, but something that's like obviously way more saucy and like mm. not so PG, Harlots on Hulu, such a good one. I couldn't get into that one. I tried. What? Yeah, I, I, I think I gave up after the first episode. I just it just wasn't hitting it for me. I could see that. I feel like the first episode's a pretty slow start, but I feel like the rest of the first season is super good. Season two is great. Third season, they kind of lost me, but I just like. I like now. Is there is there room for this uh, this whole British thing to be like? Could they make a parody of it? Like, could you do a British comedy version of a Bridgerton type show, Jordan? Oh, I think that would be great. Of course. Mm. Now they're planning on killing off each brother at the end of every season. Like, he only didn't find love. He's taught is dead. It's like Bridgerton and zombies. Theodore Bridgerton. I was just gonna say maybe uh, can we get a little death and carnage, please? For the rest of the audience that is going, I don't care if his vinyl is pressed or not. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> is he falling off the horse today? No. Okay. What year does it take place in, Jordan? Oh, God, I don't know. Is it like the 1800s or something? It's like, yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. before, you know, the Industrial Revolution. Industrial so. Age or something? Mm-hmm. All right. Way before that, for sure. Anyway, so I guess it's owed my respect. I don't know. I feel like because that's that popular that I don't know anything about movies and TV at all. Because I just, I don't know. Same with, like, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, guys, is, like, made, like, $80 million. Uh, I couldn't get through the first movie. So maybe this is why I don't work in, in TV and movies right now, because I just don't get it. Could you imagine attending that meeting like, hey, we're going to adapt this video game character who eats hot dogs and jumps through magic rings, and he fights a guy named Dr. Egg. Let's make it a movie. In fact, let's make it two movies. Green yeah. light. They're making money. All right, let's see if we can change the energy in the gym. It's kind of my fault. Like I'm, Maybe I'm tired. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, this... I mean, this isn't reality TV, but it is reality TV. The Johnny Depp and Amber uh, Heard defamation trial is going to be aired by Court TV. And I want to think, like, Court TV is not, like, really a TV channel, but they're like, we need ratings. We need ratings. we got to broadcast the, the trial of the century. I didn't think Court uh, TV was around anymore. I guess maybe, it is, Dave. You better check out the listings, buddy. <laughs> Bring it on. I'm down to watch. I don't know. Oh. It will probably be super boring, but I just like think the whole, you know, the like hubbub of it all, you know. Huh. Lots of highlights. Hopefully they'll have like, a, I don't know, ESPN Sports Center type like, all right, and then this happened. Ah. That's funny. Like you get to look behind the veil and like find out that actors are like really boring if they don't have a script in their hands or like a makeup, or, like, a wardrobe and makeup crew. Yeah. <laughs> It's just super well, depressing. I mean, <laughs> that's ever, how I feel when I look at Johnny Depp. I'm like, oh. Well, that's uh, like that. That's funny you bring that up because there was that Hulk Hogan documentary from a few years ago. Like, uh, well, okay, Dave. Who has worse dirty laundry, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard or Hulk Hogan? Uh, I don't know. I feel like they're on par, actually. Okay. Well, because I remember what's already come out in the court case with Johnny Depp is like. 
She cut off part of his finger. He shit the bed after our, a night of hard drinking and partying. No, she what shit else? The bed. She no, shit the he bed. shit the bed. She shit the bed. No, she shit the bed. That's why. That's what was so salacious. I mean, I would watch that game. So she shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this screams depressing, and then to watch it on television, it just seems so but sad. But did you hear about the finger? Like, she threw something at him, and it cut the tip of his finger off, or, like, something oh. like that? I, I, I think I think they're just both not good for each other. I don't... Oh. <laughs> I think it's just oil and water. Um, well, well, we'll see. Maybe it will be an interesting court case. I don't know. I don't know. It's prevented him from being able to make movies, and, like, every movie he has made is, like, can't get released correctly. Like uh, he just had something come out. Like, well, where he plays a photographer, or Minamata, or whatever that yeah. is. Um. Oh, do you know the Hot Shots movies, Jordan? Hot Shots um, Part D. I was just I am okay. DPing them. Yeah, so it's like a parody of Rambo movies, and also oh, Top Gun. And Top Gun it actually, actually it turns like Rambo and Top Gun into one character played by Charlie Sheen, and like so he's like. You know, an operative, military operative, or whatever. But um, this is like when they first started making those parody movies, kind of like um, Robin Hood Minute Tights, or like uh, the original yeah, scary cool. movie stuff. You know, was, there was like ten years where it's just like anything that came out had also a parody movie of it made, and um, it's really funny. I guess like underage viewers or younger viewers got to watch these movies on Disney Plus before Disney's like, oh, we should probably pull this off. I don't think they're that outrageous. I think they're like PG-13. They're not bad. Yeah. But mean, there was have, a stick about have, it online. They have the X-Men movies on there, and they have... Um, yeah, Sim but they're, the probably, they're probably lumping Charlie Sheen just in with being like a bad egg, you know? I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. But, I mean, huh. he's not in the movie. Eh, whatever. Well, I think lately they're like just really watching Disney stories because of like the... Somehow Disney's linked to that controversial bill that they passed or whatever. I don't know. So, like, anything that Disney does is, like, an article. Um, oh, rumor mill. Like, so they were merging. Discovery Channel bought Warner Brothers or bought HBO or whatever from Warner Brothers. So they're, like, merging Warner Brothers with HBO into, like, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. But I guess, like, a bunch of Warner Media and HBO people, like, walked out over bad decisions in involving the merger. Hmm. Uh Discovery makes like all those investigative shows and like the paranormal activity. Bro, there's a ghost on my shoulder, bro. Did you feel it? It's two degrees colder. Let's go to the EVP. EVP says, blah, 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 blah. and then they go, It said I want a cheeseburger. All right. <laughs> Is that finished business? Get this ghost a cheeseburger. Um, you know, it has all that. What's that? Like, not Ghost Brothers. That's a show, but Property Brothers. No, do they do Property Brothers? Do they do well, all like, the real estate shows? Discovery Maybe they do. Plus is like something like six different networks. Like it's TLC, it's Discovery Channel, it's uh, History Channel. It's like got all that stuff. Like I do, I get it because I watch all their ninety day fiance stuff, and my wife loves those ghost shows that you're talking uh, about. Yeah. yeah. Well, hmm. I've got sucked into yeah, a few I... of their shows. I watch a whole show about people who buy pallets of used stuff. It's called Extreme Unboxing, where they buy. <laughs> use merchandise to sell online i don't know i get stuck on these things i <laughs> like all their true i watch a lot of their true crime stuff like their like series about you know horrific mm -hmm. things that happen around the world so Same. those ones are super fun um i mean i have no thoughts on this i mean i don't really i have no opinion on what because discovery does all the documentary things so i don't understand what their influence is going to be like over fictional stuff. So I don't really know. I don't, th I uh, think it's just going to be a matter of you're just merging the two and they're still going to operate like, Hey, make your movies. Hey, we'll make our documentaries and we'll just put it on one platform. I don't think there's going to be much change other than you're going to have one spot to go to instead of two. Maybe. All right, folks, before we get into tonight's movie, we're going to let you know that uh, tonight's show was brought to you by our buddies at, Experts Exchange. This episode is brought to you by Experts Exchange, the original technology community. If you're in IT, listen up. This might literally be the answer to all your problems. I know I'm not the only one who's been stuck on a problem at work. We've all been there, and we all do the same thing when it happens. We Google, 
or go to DuckDuckGo. We end up finding a guy in a random forum who posted an answer to a question 10 years ago, and we just have to trust that he's right. If you trust the wrong person, you could be putting your organization and yourself at risk. What if there's a group of people you knew you could trust? That's Expert Exchange or EE. EE is a community of thousands of tech professionals who have been helping each other solve problems for 25 years. Many of the members are highly accomplished with titles like Microsoft MVP and Oracle Ace, to name a few. But you don't have to be an expert on EE. You just have to be willing to help. No one can be an expert in everything. That's why you need to surround yourself with people you can trust. Right now, listeners to this podcast can join Experts Exchange completely free for seven days. Just go to e-e.com to get started. That's e-e.com and let them know that Binge Watchers sent you. If you're interested, we appreciate you telling them that we sent you there. Now back to the movie in progress, which is a movie called Domino. Dave, you want to tell them what Domino's about? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got it written down somewhere. I'll read it. Um, in this film, loosely based on a true story, Domino Harvey is a former model. She's turned bounty hunter. She's uh, been arrested. What? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. She is arrested in the beginning of the movie. She got arrested for this armored car robbery or her involvement in it, and then she gets interrogated. She claims she has nothing really to do with it. She explains the story. She had previously become a pupil of Ed Mosby, played by Mickey Rourke, who ran a course for aspiring bounty hunters, along with Choco, who in real life is like a guy named Martinez, I think, but played by this actor named Edgar Ramirez, who's pretty cool. The three of them become a successful team, but then a Bell Bondsman, played by Delroy Lindo, gets uh, offered a job that they face this like complicated, like uh, it's almost like a three-way hatchet job. It's like there's like a double cross and a triple cross and a quadruple cross, which gets kind of confusing, but it's entertaining there's the whole way. Crossing. There's a lot of crossing going on. <laughs> Um, Davey with the dangerous facts. All right. So, um, well, I crack open this count of Mountain Dew now sponsored by Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, so, uh, friends close to the real life Domino actually expressed that she was not happy with the final film because it portrayed her as, you know, being a somebody who likes the men when actually she liked the ladies in real life. So she was mm. not happy with her representation there. Um, and sadly, Domino Harvey passed away just four months before the movie was actually released. Um, and as such, the film was dedicated to her. And Tony Scott and Mickey Work actually were at her funeral. Um, so talking about the technical side of this movie, um, Scott, uh, director Tony Scott used six, ca six cameras at all times so he could shoot in different styles. Um, he would often shoot scenes at six frames a second on hand crank cameras and double exposed, do all these things, get the trailing looks. Like he, it was a very experimental movie. Um, and actually this movie had been in development for 12 years with many different scripts. And actually Sharon Stone was attached at one point in the nineties to play Domino it would have been a much different movie. Um, and director Tony Scott actually considers this his rock and roll movie. And he threw in everything into the style of this movie, which we'll probably get into more. This is very stylistic movie. Like that's, Probably the biggest thing about it. <laughs> so, I guess we can move on now to favorite bits. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, think I guess it's my turn. Favorite bits. I loved it when Domino in the movie. She's like chasing after Choco, like when they first meet at the uh, the bounty hunter seminar, right? So she can kind of hear him slipping out the window, and she just like runs down the stairs, out the door, and then just steps right in front of the car and demands to have a job after, you know, throwing a knife into the windshield. So definitely one of my favorite bits there. A little transformation in to finishing being a bad girl. But, yeah, Dave. Um, I had a few favorite bits. Um, first, this movie, even though this is a movie, it felt like very much – like a 1970s cop movie for a minute the opening credits of this just felt like hey we're letting you know this is a movie and also about tv kind of a tv show it feels like and you know makes sense because a tv show is a big part of it actually a couple tv shows are a big part of this movie a fictional one and uh actually not fictional one um uh you know having the whole thing the whole um parallel or um scenes with the goldfish <laughs> i mean kind of in a movie full of like craziness, it brought a little levity in little moments where you reminded like, oh yeah, she's a human and she cares about this goldfish, Sammy or Sam. Um, 
And then anything with the uh, with the nine hundred two one zero actors was I just yeah. didn't expect that in this movie uh, for these guys to play them like a Ian Zarian and Brian Austin them. Green. Ian, it's Ian. Ian, as he had to point out in the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and what about you, John? Yeah, they're producing this bounty hunter TV reality show, and then they want celebrities to ho- to host it, and then they include the bounty hunter. What's funny is like the bounty hunters aren't having any of it. Like I love their attitudes. Like. They can't be bothered, you know, like um, of the Mickey Rourke movies that have come out in like the last 10 or 15 years. This is one of the better ones. This is one of his better parts next to like the wrestler. I was just going to say it's not better than the wrestler. But no, I said one of E better, I, you know, yeah, yeah, instead of like yeah. the straight to on demand action movies that he's making in like countries whose names I can't even pronounce, you know. So this is like pretty legit for him to be like the head of the bounty hunters. Um, gosh, like the style is really cool. Like there's a lot of, it's like hard to narrow down a favorite bit because I just like the tone. So, but I think some of the stuff is kind of outrageous. Like, I don't think they could go collect a perp and like rip his arm off and then still get a bounty. So (laughs) you know what I mean? Like some stuff is exaggerated. I don't know how dangerous it was in real life. Um, well, the whole movie is exact. I mean, I kept having to remind myself watching it that the very beginning tells you based on a true story, sort of like, I yeah. kept having to remind right. myself like, oh, yeah, B- or it's not so much BS, but like, OK, this is a movie version of it. Let's see, like the story falls apart to me, like after the well, it's kind of it's really like during the double triple cross or whatever, like Same. there's a mobster that doesn't know that his own kids, spoiler alert, ripped him off. And then he has his own kids executed, and then they're like, where's the money? And then there's like a big shootout at the Stratosphere Casino, which at the time was like the big new casino, and it was like being advertised in this movie, which is really funny that they got the... They must have thought like a marketing thing, like the people in Vegas who owned it. Like, oh yeah, we'll have our new casino in this movie, because... Um, you guys remember that? Because it's supposed to be like point. the tallest casino in the world, or whatever. Like, Yeah, they have... And you uh, go to a space casino or, or something. Yeah. yeah. They have the seats um, roller coaster at the top. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, so if I can narrow down a fan, like, I, so I, I guess I just like the camaraderie between the bounty hunters and I, I do like the reality show that incorporates a couple of dudes from 90210. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I got to bang out some more messages, which I didn't already. So I got to plug some more stuff real quick and then we'll move on to how we're going to rate this. But I think I have an idea of where we're going unless I guess we're wrong. Okay. Um, where am I? Well, here we go. I'll talk about this because I got a box of this. Ooh. Well, sort of. I got the death. It says the world's strongest coffee. That's what I'm going to talk about. Death Wish they had, coffee. They had some pretty strong coffee in the movie. Did it's they? Like the whole, yeah, when they're driving the bus and it was. Oh, yeah. they have. Oh, that's right. There is coffee in the movie. The coffee is laced with. Masculine. Uh, angel dust or something. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Um. Anyways, well, not what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Death Wish Coffee is not. Is, actually, Death Wish Coffee is a blend of Arabica and Robusta beans. Um, obviously, Arabica is prized for being you know complex flavor and uh, delicate aromas, but Robusta beans actually have the twice amount as caffeine, so they used to use those in like instant coffee and cheaper commercial coffees, but these guys at Death Wish have like blended them together, and so they're considered like a specialty coffee roast. But they're certified fair trade and USDA organic. And here's the here's what I wanted to track down. Because it's only worth it if the caffeine in this coffee really is out of control. So I was looking up on this uh, coffee statistics website, like, what the deal is. So it is why it's considered the world's strongest coffee. A six-ounce cup of this coffee, average coffee, is 75 milligrams is like your average cup of coffee, right, of caffeine. Mm-hmm. Death Wish Coffee has 350 milligrams of caffeine in a single cup. So, but it's okay because I guess you're allowed to have like up to 400 milligrams per day without really inducing any uh, actual Death Wishes. So, they're one of our affiliates. You can grab the link. I'll put it in the notes. It's also somewhere on our website and uh, you can try their coffee. Um, it's pretty good. I've been drinking this coffee like all month. I did have the coffee mug, but I broke it unfortunately oh. so i can't show off the coffee mug i'll get another one maybe i'll send you guys some coffee man um what else 
one more thing. We're back on Stereo. Stereo is a live conversation app. You can uh, talk to your listeners on there. What we're going to do is read some information about Stereo now. Here we go. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like doing like these, like, I'm like breaking the fourth wall. And Jordan broke it already on the coffee thing, too. It's pretty funny. Um, okay, so we're going back to Stereo. We're going to do some behind the scenes bonus content sessions over there. As a reminder, for those who haven't been on Stereo, there's thousands of live conversations with a wide variety of genres for every interest, news, comedy, or sports. But what podcasters are doing is dropping on there for some bonus Q&A stuff or taking deep dives. Basically, what we did was, like, we recently went in there and we're compiling, like, oh, what's the list of mind-blowing movies? Like, what are mind-bender movies? And, like, it's a giant list, more than you could talk onto like, our half-hour show. So we were on there for, like, two hours, like, talking about, like, oh, yeah, this movie, that movie, that movie. Like, um... Dave, you Looper. remember some of the ones we talked about? Looper was a big one we talked about. Yeah, Looper was on there. Get Out was on there. Anyway, a whole bunch of movies. So that's like the exclusive place. You can join us, actually. You can tell us what you think are mind-bending movies because you can actually talk to us as the podcasters. You can listen live or you can join live and join the conversations. So if you want to follow us, it's Stereo.com forward slash Johnny Spoiler. Dave's on there, too. Um, I love it because you can get on there. You can follow me. If, if I'm going to go live, you'll get notifications. And as you're listening, you can join in. You can send us messages. Or you can, uh, like I said, it's kind of like if there's an after party that it's happening on stereo, you can directly talk about the topics we're covering. Like this month, we were talking about Tony Scott movies. So if we were on there, you'd be like, oh, yeah, what about uh, what about The Fan? And then we could debate with Dave about why The Fan is a good movie because Dave doesn't like The Fan. No. But if you're a fan of our show, you can visit us at Stereo.com forward slash Johnny Spoiler. And remember, don't miss out on our bonus content. It's hosted on Stereo, the app for live conversations. And we want to talk to you directly. Join the show or ask questions about your favorite episodes and share your experiences or opinions. Download now and join us live every month. Stereo.com. Or slash Johnny Spoiler. And now back to the show in progress. We didn't have to go very far. <laughs> Um, where are we? Oh, we're gonna rate this Domino Harvey movie. Here we go. See, by the see, what happens is when you do like a series of movies by the same director, Jordan. I don't know if this happened. Did we have any jet lag or like during the holiday movies or the feel gooders? Not really, right? Not like this. Like once you get like a few in from a director, you're just like ah, I'm tired of this. What's the new stuff? What <laughs> you know? Let's move on. Um, let's rate it. Uh, I almost feel like I'm trying to influence your rating of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is a binge later. I yeah. love a good like girl power movie, but it was when it, the whole like double triple crossing was. I just kind of got a little lost there, so I don't know. Yeah, binge later. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna say binge later. It's almost it's almost damn near a binge never for me. Um, I was really disappointed by this movie. I was looking forward to it. Of all the movies on the list for this month, I was like, oh, this, this is the is first I'm... time. This is like your first time through this movie. Yeah, and I, I was really looking forward to it, and it's. Outside of the style, I mean, I think everything falls apart with the script. I think this, and and it's from the guy who did wrote Donnie Darko, which is probably the best thing he's done, and he hasn't like, he's captured that success since. Um, it's not a bad. I mean, like I said, the the style and some of the performances can make up for its weaknesses. Um, but it, and there's just a lot of stuff. Like I mean, it just um, it feels like. It's, it feels like it wants to be a feminist movie, but it wants to be really sexy and dirty too. And it just doesn't feel like all of a sudden, like, all right, I'm going to strip for you. I'm going to give you a lap dance. Like, isn't she supposed to be a badass, but now she's objectifying herself? I mean, not even try to, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how to correctly give my thoughts on that, but it just, it felt. Dave, how well do you to convince those Vatos to give up their buddy? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, time out, Dave. I want you, you got to admit now on air that, like, your first move, I know, as a bounty hunter, is you're going right for the strip tease method. <laughs> yes. Come on, Dave, tell the truth. <laughs> whatever gets me, whatever, whatever gets them in the car with the, you know, handcuffs, I guess. Take them off guard. I mean, you know, that probably would be a good strategy to take them off guard, I suppose. But the male bounty hunter just starts <laughs> ripping it off. Like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Get it, Dave. <laughs> You got to know your audience, Dave. You got to know your clients. It depend. I don't know how big is their bounty. I guess three hundred k. Oh yeah, I'll strip for why not three hundred k? Sure. Yeah. One song, sure. I'll you know put put on a song. 
cherry pie. I don't know. What about you, John? I, I feel like I know where you're going with this. Oh, where am I going with this? I mean, you're rating. Well, damn it. Hey, the movie is a lot of style over substance, so I will say that. Like, it has a lot of editing tricks, a lot of lighting tricks. He used different film speeds in different cameras. Um, I get really mad about the flipping the coin bit. Like, I don't care about that. And also, they get all killed at the end of the movie, but then it gets undone because they flip the coin the other way, and they don't get all killed. So it's like, I don't know, man. That stuff bothers me. But when this movie came out, I watched it like, Seven times. So I, I mean, I guess I like the movie. I don't know. <laughs> like, like uh, you know, like Tony Scott, like reinvented himself, you know, like right before, like, okay, now I'm going to bring the episode down because I'm just going to say it. Like he killed himself. Like he committed suicide because he had um, a brain disease. And well, that's what they say. I, I Obviously nobody really knows except for his family. Maybe his brother knows, right? Nobody but they had mentioned in the news that he had just got diagnosed with like a brain condition. Yeah. But then he like jumps off the Los Angeles, um, something down there by like Los Angeles Harbor or something where they have the, the big boats come into LA or whatever. It says the Vincent yeah. Thomas bridge in San yeah. Pedro port. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. down there by the port authority. So, which is like really intense, like right after he like reinvented himself as a filmmaker and like, had developed this style in Domino and a movie called Man on Fire, which we briefly mentioned last week, and one of our fans mentioned uh, in yeah. a comment. But uh, it's kind of tragic because at the time I was like, I thought like he was at the top of his game all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like he was doing stuff that he hadn't done before. You know, the best of what he could do. You know, yeah. so well because his last movie was a pretty decent hit too, which was uh, Unstoppable with. Uh... Denzel Washington. Oh, the train <laughs> movie. That's pretty good, too. Yeah, so he's probably been hit movies up until you know, yeah. he passed away. Now I'm going to throw Jordan under the bus. Your light's bothering me. I don't know what keeps happening. Jordan's like, <laughs> I'm trying to block my head with it. I can't not move. It's like, a, it's, like, away. it's like she's secretly disagreeing with us, and so the light keeps going on and off to indicate, like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> what? Um, I guess it's a binge later because I just have watched it too many times. It it definitely maybe hasn't like uh it's it has not a, a, well, it's, it's, it's not a rewatchable like it's like it's capsulated into a very it's like a time capsule for a very specific time coming out of the nineties into like the early mid two thousand movies it's like fits into like this very specific place that's why it's hard to watch a bunch of nineties movies like because if you watch a bunch of stuff from the nineties if you guys notice this like everything blows up. And then it blows up on top of blowing up. And the stakes are so high, they're unbelievable. And it's just like, there's these really big monster movies. Like, And I'm not, I'm not literally saying like it's a movie about a monster, like a Godzilla. But it's like the plot is like, a, it's like a ginormous plot. It involves so many moving pieces, right? Yeah. And like, dang, the 90s are exhausting as far as movies go. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like a lot of those movies have not aged well. Like, I don't think there's many 90s movies to revisit. Are there, Dave? I, I would disagree. I think I think the 90s is actually one of the best. I, I think it, I think you're, what you're talking about specifically is, like, the big budget movies of the 90s. 90s, to me, like, when I think of the good movies of the 90s, I'm thinking of, like, the smaller indie movies. But, yeah, as far as, like, big budget movies, mm. maybe, I think you're on the right track. I mean, it is. I mean, if you've got a big TV and a good sound system, I will say it's worth. I mean, I have a surround sound, and like they do crazy. Like you think the visuals are nuts, they do crazy stuff with the sound too. Like there's just sound effects going everywhere, like bouncing around, just like. Don't so know. overall, it's like a binge later. Then is what I'm what I'm hearing. Yeah. I think okay. Uh, we have a new segment on the show called Savage Shame Viewing <laughs> with Jordan Savage. So, uh, she can. If she she can tell us about a classic movie that she finally got to see on her imaginary list. I I kind of poked fun and I found this guy's he like sure post. Did. I found a post <laughs> where the guy was like, "Yeah," and then there's this conversation where your friend tells you about a movie that you should watch, waits to make sure that you're going to watch it, and then you can say, "Yeah, I'm going to put that on my list." The list isn't real. <laughs> see what's funny is I couldn't even comment on that because I'm actually the opposite. I do actually have a list and I do put stuff on yeah. there from people. 
Oh no, I write the list down, but I, I feel like there's like probably 15 lists going at once. So it's like, Whoa. you know, I got to consolidate and, yeah. you know, put them, put them down. But yeah. So my segment is about some movies that are super iconic that I shamefully have seen only for the first time. And um, I'll just start with one of the, the biggest ones that I think is kind of shameful. I've finally seen for the first time, which was, yeah, Forrest Gump. I had just seen it for the first time. Not that long ago and um yeah it's just it's shameful it's, it's what it is <laughs> okay so uh can you rate that movie or like is there any did you like is there any um anything to glean from watching that movie like do you, do you walk away from that movie with anything or what oh yeah it was a binge it would be a binge now for me for sure um hmm. You know, it's it's just a, kind of a sweet story about his, you know, unconditional love for for Jenny. And uh, it, and, you know, I just I thought that was very, very interesting. Good storyline for sure. I got to rewatch that. I, it, I That's one that I used to watch a lot on VHS back in the day, but I, I probably haven't watched it. Don't think it's a bloated 90s movie. movie. It doesn't fall into the category of the bloated 90s movie. I no, because I think that one maybe because it's a, a nostalgic or like you know a, a time piece, you know it gets away from that. What mm. you're talking, what you're talking about earlier. Nicely noted. My sister's name is Jenny too, so like her entire life, people would be saying Jenny, uh, and like it uh, just Jenny, you know, Jenny. like knew the, the movie. Like, I knew that it came from there, but I was just like I'd never seen Forrest Gump until, yeah, very recently. So that's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, the other the other line, something about chocolate. Your life is a box of chocolates, or whatever. Oh, so sweet. That's the other thing you heard everywhere. There's a million parodies of that. Um, apparently, that was a hard movie to get made. It bounced around between different studios, and there's a sequel because I guess it's based on like a novel. I think there's. Actually, I've books. actually I've actually read it, and as as insane as the movie is, when you think about like all the stuff he's done, the book is even more nuts. Like he actually goes into space oh. at one point. Yeah, because he's he like, involved in every major yeah. important event in history from nineteen sixty whatever yeah. to nineteen eighty something. Or exactly. Like he, he he ends up like getting lost on like the set of a, a Raquel Welch movie. I think like ten thousand BC. <laughs> so like at some point he's with her and they get lost on the highway. It's it's the book is even more insane than the movie. It's really huh. weird. Did you like the book, Dave? Yeah, I enjoyed it at the time. I think I read it like not soon after the movie came out because I, you know, I liked the movie at the time. But yeah, yeah, it's it's just very the movie. The movie is nuts, and yet it feels way more grounded than the novel comes from. Hmm. So. Ooh, staff picks, which is almost like an extension of the shame viewing that Jordan just did. <laughs> it's extension. Well, so ah. have you seen anything like even newish or TV show? newish um that would be shameful to watch for the first time no but i did just start watching dick town which is super funny on Hulu. <laughs> i keep I, seeing that keep suggesting that i watch that but i yeah. haven't turned it on yet so funny and it kind of falls into the whole you know like bounty hunter situation he's not a bounty hunter but he's a private investigator but mm. he only works cases for high school students that's like the whole premise of oh, the Oh, that's show. ridiculous. Like, that sounds funny. He, yeah, I can't like get PI cases for like grown-ups. So he gets stuck solving crimes for like, you know, really annoying high school kids. And he lives on a houseboat. It's just like, and I love it because it's kind of got the same animation as Archer and mm. a couple of familiar mm. voices. So, um, and I love that it's like 15 minute episodes too. They're not super long. They're, they're a little bit on the short side. So you can bang a couple out and they're super funny. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Um, I've seen a couple of uh, new things worth talking about. One in theaters, one streaming. Um, but <laughs> uh, the, the new movie, um, actually from the directors of uh, Swiss Army Man, which I, if I remember right, Jordan, you're a fan. Yes, uh, huge fan. Yeah. So I highly, 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 the first five star movie I've seen in a long time, everywhere, every, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, the new movie with Michelle Yao. Um, actually, of all things, um, John might appreciate this. The actor who played Short Round and Data, or Short Round in Temple of Doom and um, Data in Goonies actually is like ah. the second lead in this movie. Nice. Like first big acting role in 20 years. Um, it's a multiverse movie. 
I, I won't get too heavy into the plot. You have to see it for yourself. It's uh, like, it's what I go to the movies for. I laughed. I got moved. It's just, it's the best movie I've seen in a long time. And whoever had to edit this movie had a big challenge. This is one of the craziest edited movies I've seen in a long time. And yet it all makes sense. Um, so if you, if you're not afraid of going to the theater, I highly suggest that. Um, and another thing, does the title not... mean anything? Does the title well, yeah, make sense? Watch the movie? She's everywhere. She's everywhere. Every, every yeah, everywhere, everything, or everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah. Cause she, you know, it takes place in the multiverse. So she is, you know, herself. What's the, the genre of the movie? movie? Cause what, what's the genre? I would is say it's a comedy. Oh, sci-fi. It's a sci-fi comedy. I mean, there's some drama in there as well. It's, uh, I mean, it's, if you've seen the trailer, you know there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on, including hot dog fingers, and I won't say much more about that. Um, uh, the other, I just caught it today. I mentioned hot dog fingers and not tell us. That's Lame. the title for the for the episode: <laughs> hot dog fingers. <laughs> um, Can you imagine but, somebody listening for like 20 minutes and going like, "They haven't fucking mentioned hot dogs this entire time." <laughs> All right, you made the cut. <laughs> um, the other one I saw this afternoon is on Netflix uh, called Metal Lords. Um, it is a teenage coming of age high school movie about kids trying to start a metal band. And um, mm. there's a battle of the bands at the end, but it's just, it's a sweet movie. I haven't seen this kind of movie in a while. It's just, you know, kids trying to make a band and get good at it and um, dealing with that kind of thing. So check that out. Especially if you like heavy metal music. If you're a metalhead, which I kind of am, uh, you'll really like it. There's a great uh, metal soundtrack in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got one of the kids from, it's got one of the kids from Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Dave John, was so excited. You? He was so excited to tell us about it. He just smacked his cup. No, that was me. Oh, that was you? Oh, I thought yeah. it was Dave because Dave made a reaction. <laughs> well, because... I don't know if you're, yeah. if you're listening, you can't see this, but if you happen to see the video, you'll see. Dave had an like, expression. Dave, I was looking at you, and it looked like it, it's it, never mind. It's it, like you you reacted at the right time, and I thought you knocked something over on your desk. I should have so, blamed it on you, Dave. Totally, you should have been like, Dave. Yeah, come on, bro. Whoa, <laughs> Dave, throwing a fit over there. Yeah, John, what did you watch? Anything of uh, for for fan picks? I don't know. I feel boring. I didn't watch anything with hot dog fingers in it. This is true. Um, no, I was like, I must have watched all the Star Trek movies as a kid because I'm watching part five, which is like notoriously of the original movies. Nobody likes it because William Shatner directed it. And he only got to direct it because there's a clause in his contract that says like, whatever Spock gets to do, I get to do like Kirk gets to do. Right. Cause like um, him and Leonard Nimoy, like used to come, this is like trivia, right? So like him and Leonard Nimoy used to compete and like uh there was jealousy and feuding going on so but then leonard nimoy got like linked up with the guys that were making the movies right so in the original run of the movies is like spock was becoming more popular than kirk and william shatner was kind of like on the outside and then he was able to argue in his contract like well if you know leonard slash spock gets to direct a movie i get to direct one of these movies in part five spock has like a crazy half brother that comes out of nowhere and he's like a cult leader and he steals their ship, which is, you know, the famous Star Trek ship is called the Enterprise. And so they're going to go look for God in the middle of the galaxy or something. And I was like, I actually don't hate this movie. Like, I kind of like it. And, like, it's critically panned. But I realized it's probably because as a kid, I saw part five first before I saw the other ones. Then I saw part four, which is about time traveling to get some whales because... <laughs> Figure this one out. So in the future, talking about like bloated movies that make no sense. In order to save the future, there's an alien probe that will only talk to humpback whales, but the future doesn't have any humpback whales. So let's time travel. Let's waste all of our resources to slingshot around the sun, go back to the 80s or whatever, get some whales from an aquarium, shoot back to the future, and see if the whales are willing to talk to the alien probe for us. We don't know if that's going to be successful, but I was thinking like, oh yeah, so... All the technology in the 24th century, you can't just program the computer to talk like a whale so it can answer the alien message and, and you know, whatever. Um, 
I just bored the shit out of Jordan. She's like, I don't no, know you anymore. I, I, don't I feel know. like <laughs> seven different Futurama episodes just like came together in my brain, and I was wow. like, this all makes sense now. So I could I could imagine that Futurama referenced every single one of those movies. Probably. Oh yeah, literally yeah. just the checked team. off like three different episodes that have, were on the top of my mind. So one of my favorite moments in Futurama is where um, Fry realizes that they're living in the closet of the apartment. Like the robot only Bender only uses the closet of his apartment. And Fry's like, Oh man. And then like, he finds the rest of the apartment. Right. That, that was a good moment. Right. Yeah. yeah the, there is the whole rest of the apartment for Fry to live in. And it's there you go. Cool. Listeners, you learned about coffee that can kill you. Not really, but it's just for fun. Um, if you have it problems, we know who can help you. And if you're going to visit us on stereo, then like once a month or whatever, you can like hang out with us. So you can join us on Stereo for uncensored opinions and exclusive content. We'll be taking like the after party, the Q and A's, the bonus content over Stereo. You can directly talk to us about your favorite Futurama episodes, movies that Jordan should watch. Yeah, trying send to introduce me the, list. To the Stereo app, and then um, you can join us there. Stereo.com forward slash Johnny Spoiler. Connect all the binge watchers on there. And uh, we'll be going live once a month with some interesting conversations. Socialize with us. Share the experience and your opinions. We want to hear everything. So download now and join us live every month on Stereo.com forward slash Spoiler. <laughs> Next week, we get to finally kick off freaking werewolf movies, which, again, like, you know, we've taken off Jordan's training wheels. She's officially 100% certified binge watcher now because we've tested her cojones, emotional cojones. You know cojones? The, you know that word? Of course All right. I do. <laughs> so, so we tested her lady strength, and she she passed. Because we we did have a couple movies where we thought she wasn't going to get through. Dave, do you remember what movies are we thought we were going to be like, she'll never speak to us after we text the movie we're watching? You remember? I think it started with Robot Jocks, and we were off to Rocky Start that there. Was, that, <laughs> was yeah, yeah. that was that like, was That was the like second episode. Like, hey, watch this movie about robots <laughs> punching each other, and uh, it sucks. Good luck. Welcome Pretty to the podcast. I could do anything after watching Robot Jobs. But then, uh, yeah. then we watched Highway to Hell, and she was all on board for that, which kind of surprised, one. which really surprised me because I I hadn't seen that before either, and that was pretty out. Yeah. So now we're about to show her like every werewolf movie made, except for the ones that probably everybody has seen, like the most famous ones. We're not going to watch, but we will talk about the most famous ones. I'm thinking of are like the original Wolfman, The Howling. And uh, American Werewolf in London are probably the most famous ones. Did I miss anything, Dave? Those are like the tops, right? Well, those are the those are the yeah. like, the Mount Rushmore ones. So we're not going to cover those, but we are covering a bunch of crazy creative werewolf movies that basically it's like it is a werewolf movie, but then it does something a little extra that kind of tweaks the genre. So that's what we're going to investigate. And the first up is a newer movie called The Cursed. Not to be confused with Cursed, which is also a werewolf movie. <laughs> the Cursed just came out, and they do something kind of interesting, so we'll take a look at that. And if you stuck it out this long, this show is getting a little bit long in the tooth, but if you've binge watched this far, you might as well continue. That's what I want to hear from. I want to hear from a listener that's like actually watching the movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Do you agree or not agree? Would be fun. Oh, and I found a bunch of DVDs we have to give away. Like, we have two copies of, if anybody wants Venom, we have Venom copies. And we have Critters Attack, which was, like, one of the Critter sequels, I think, made by Sci-Fi. I don't even know how we got this, but they gave us that. Um, I should just have Dave put these on, like, one of those apps to resell DVDs. Like, here's all well, the freebies. If well, nobody wants them, we're just going to put them on, like, you sell or whatever, whatever one of those apps are. Well, tell people where they can, uh, if they want it, where they can... Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you say I'm bad about telling people what our email is? <laughs> is that what you were telling? Yeah. Jordan, do you even know the show's email? I know your email. It might be the show's. Yeah. Host, host at bwpodcast.com. Yeah. Or you can get off the website where it says write to us or contact us. Actually, I think the show notes, the podcast description now has the email written into it. Yeah. Anyway. So I guess if you want a copy of Venom or Critters Attack, yeah, email us at host at bwpodcast.com. Oh, we also have copies of The Contractor Left and that Panama movie. We have some on-demand codes as there well. Those are brand new movies. Yeah. And I know Jordan's obsessed with that one guy from the Fresh movie. 
What's his oh. name? So, oh, yeah. Sebastian yeah. Stan. So, Heck yeah. But I guess I'm kind of obsessed with Chris Pine because I'm like, Chris Pine's in The Contractor. You know you want to watch this movie. Get the code. But, You've been oh. pining for him. Pining for the pine! I guess. I'm, I'm a stand Stan, so... I was just going to say, do you stand Stan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> now nah, you've lost me. I'm out of the loop now. Stan is... Is like, Stan Stan really is like if, you're, if you're obsessed with something, you stand it. I also had to be told what that meant the other day, but yes, I don't get it. I'm a stan. I, it's, stan. I think it's so based it's off of the thing. Eminem song "Stan." So oh, okay. Eminem. So now, if you really love something or are obsessed with something, you stand them. Always with the dangerous facts. I love it. I think so, Lee. I could be. I could have it wrong. I don't know. Somebody have to correct me on that if I'm wrong. <laughs> People should send recipes for Jordan so she knows what to make with ground turkey. Yeah, please. <laughs> she's having, she's Save having, me. how much <laughs> ground turkey do you have? Problems. It just like looks so unappealing in the pan. I'm like, this just looks, it, it tastes yeah. fine. I actually like ground turkey, but you do have to, it's not like ground beef. It just, it's very mushy. Yeah, it literally looks like dog food. So, <laughs> well, we just lost our turkey sponsors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Jenny O. Oh. <laughs> we like don't want to no. lose endorsement. See, I, I just realized we, we talked earlier. Uh, Jordan does not take lists from people or have a well. Although she says she has like fifteen, maybe we should create her a letterbox list of like movies Jordan has to watch. We'll just keep putting them in there and like, sorry, yeah. Dave, are you still building our letterbox list like, of all the stuff we talk about? I have gone off that path, but I'm gonna have to. I'm probably have to listen to these episodes and start writing down titles. See, Jordan, he doesn't even keep the list. Oh, busted. Uh, I'll, Nina, I'll get on top of it and make a list of Jordan movies that she has to watch. It's, it's lengthy. It's he, just, he just sends you my, these text messages. It would be funny. You just start getting text messages, my, and then Dave's like, this is the list for the week, Jordan. It's my punishment. It's that the list never uh -huh. ends. It just gets larger and larger and larger every time we talk. Actually, so. I think you could catch up. In a couple weeks, I think you could be done with the list, because every time I go onto my TV to watch something, I can find nothing. That's <laughs> it's, it's a problem we experience these days. Hmm. You know? When you... When